Hi, this is Chris from Hindi Amps, and I am going to try and walk through the oven, the stove, and the grill. It was something that uh, we always tried to think of as kind of the triad of the saturation devices that we were envisioning. And uh, all three of them would excel at different things. They'd have some crossover with each other, they would, but they would look similar to each other so that the operator would at least have a clue of how all three would work. But all three of them are quite different and have different quirks about them. And so I want to try and go through that now. Now, mind you, I'm going to put <laughs> all kinds of uh, notations on the video so that you can jump to the sections that you want, because this video is probably going to be mega long. We'll see what happens. Uh, I tried to do as many comparisons as possible, and hopefully you'll find anything in there that you're looking for, and you won't have to just struggle through and watch a 30-minute video <laughs> all the way through start to finish. Though if you want to, then please be my guest because I think you'll learn a lot. Okay, so starting with the oven here. The oven is, has been around for a few years and it, Plugin Alliance has a, uh, a plugin of it. So I imagine that many people who are watching this has either used an oven or used the plugin. And uh, congratulations to you. And so you, I would imagine that you probably have a pretty good feel for what it's like, but I was just going to go through and do, do a quick little walkthrough of it, and then I'll explain where the stove and the, gr uh, the grill kind of deviate. And so when I'm doing the demo, you'll see kind of as I'm jumping around what each thing is doing and how they'll deviate. So all three are intended to be fairly clean mastering grade when, um, when all the dials are set to default positions, and these are the default positions if you're, well, if you're wondering. And so from there, they'll saturate quite a bit. They'll add volume, they'll subtract volume, they'll do all kinds of things. But the oven specifically was envisioned to be a MOSFET driver. And the reason I'm using MOSFETs is because the ones that I use are these little goofy little high voltage um, MOSFETs. It's a solid state device, but it's also running on two voltages, which is near and dear to my heart because when you get that kind of voltage running through these things, you just get possibilities that solid state gear just normally cannot do. And so I have always loved tubes for much of my life. And this was the first time that I came across another topology that I thought, oh my gosh, I can get some just as cool of tones, just different tones. They're just a whole different ball game. And I've come to really love them. So, but the question was, what happens when you have a multi-band MOSFET saturator that also is in parallel with a pentode tube saturator? Or if you're using the stove, multi-band saturator of MOSFETs in parallel with a triode, like a 12AX7, which has a very different harmonic structure than a pentode tube. Uh, it's using the EF86 or EF806, depending upon which brand. And, um, and so you get odd order harmonics from the MOSFETs as well as the pentode. Here you're getting the odd order harmonics from the MOSFETs as well as the um, even order from the pentode. And so the way that I would kind of compare these two would be this one is super punchy and articulate and, and just a very good unit for really anything. It doesn't matter what it is. It'll add life to it. It'll add punch to it. It'll add clarity and a thickness with the cook knob especially that you just, you're just not going to get somewhere else. Whereas here, it adds that same kind of clarity, but it's a different kind of clarity. So we ran transformer less on this one specifically so that these burners would, would, would act in a little bit of a different way, the way that it's driven. In fact, you can, you can tell that the calibrations are a little bit off because this one has a step down transformer. So you actually have to drive this unit harder to equal the same level as this one. And so this one, you actually drive a little bit less. And so the whole thing responds differently a result of it. And then when you put the triode in, the triode's going to give you a low mid thickness that the pentode won't and that the MOSFETs won't. And it's going to give you a sheen up top that really kind of makes this, this kind of a sparkly effect on sizzle. So the, so the way I would liken it would be, here's, the, here's your punchy, thick, rich, full sound. Here is another type of thick, rich, full sound, but it's a very sparkly, glossy sort of sound. Uh, both of them are amazing. I use both of them routinely on uh, all of all the time. In fact, I use the grill as well. Uh, but this is the newest one, and so I've used this one far less uh, as a result of just having had enough time with it. Um, now, as far as the grill, though, speaking of the grill, this one was the question of what happens if we had the MOSFET burners with the same transformer out that you have with the oven, but you have a MOSFET driver, and that how does that interact with the whole ecosystem differently? Because remember, the, the grill, the flame, the cook knob are actually in parallel with the whole burner circuit. 
And so by doing that, you actually change an immense amount of things at the same time, especially with some of the changes that we have with how the temp, simmer, blaze, or the frizzle, saute, and sizzle, how those are set up. They all interact in different ways and, and produce different things. Now, the other thing that we did with the grill, oops, low burn needs to be up. The other thing we did with the grill was that we actually decided that we wanted to essentially double, in effect, double the range of the burners with the grill so that this becomes a much more powerful, aggressive tool. Because again, if you're, if you're using all MOSFETs, it just it seemed like something that we really wanted to explore. And so this one actually can be very useful on mix buses and instrument buses and so forth. Um, doubling as a saturator as well as an EQ, even more so than these, because of the massive range that you're going to get all the way through everything. In fact, we even increased the grill ability with boosting here, uh, much like we did here. Though, again, they respond differently because you're dealing with MOSFET driver here as opposed to a triode here. Um, and then one other thing that we added in these two, the stove and the grill, is that we wanted the ability to isolate just the tube or isolate just the MOSFET driver. So this switch right here that's not in the oven, the switch right here, when you flip it to the right, it actually disconnects everything except for the flame circuit or except for the grill circuit. And um, the joy of that is that you get to explore a whole different world where you're taking out the parallel note, you know, nature of everything and driving just the, the flat drivers. Uh, and so that's when you really can start to hear differences with this switch and this switch because on both of them because you have a variety of different options where it's isolated and it's not interacting with the burners and it's not changing the impedance and all that kind of good stuff. It's just a whole different world to explore. Now, along with that, in the grill, the unique thing about the grill that the rest of them don't have is that we have this little three-way toggle switch. And you'll notice that these are in red. Maor told me, hey, these need to be in red because they're like meaning business, and, and he's right. We wanted some distortion-making abilities here, uh, more so than, than the other two. The other two can distort definitely if you drive them hard, but this one, we wanted it to be able to distort even if you're not driving it hard. So if you turn up grill and you're doing any, you know, driving it, whatever you want to do, when you flip it to the left, this little thing is called blowtorch, <laughs> appropriately named, because what's going to happen is you're actually going to get a, a um, diode-driven distortion circuit that's going to interact here. And so you're going to have some super hard clipping, like mega hard clipping, which is fantastic for things like snare or if you want to have that as an effect. But sometimes you wish you had the clipping, but you somehow let the low hits come through. And that's what blowtorch B is for so that you can actually drive the MOSFETs into distortion, but also into some clipping, some diode-based clipping, but you're going to isolate the low end so that it's really not being affected by the clipping. And it's a whole different effect. It gives you a, a very different sound than what you would get in Blowtorch A. So just another option to work with, especially when you're doing mixing. Would I master with this tool? Absolutely, but it can be a little bit more tricky because you gotta be a little bit more careful with your turns. These two would be more naturally oriented towards mastering in the sense that you have a lot looser movements will do less as far as total movement in the sound. This one you can, it's 100% mastering grade circuit, except you're gonna have to do about half the turning as you would on these two. And that brings a great amount of power with it, but it also brings some, um, you, know, you just have to be a little bit more careful with, with when you're turning knobs. Uh, would I mix master track with any of these? 100% absolutely yes, no question about it, and I do in real life. So I, I love all three of them. Now, as far as how they respond to different tracks, what, what, what kind of tracks would I use for each one of them and how would I set it up? Generally speaking, I would use all three for anything. But if I'm choosing the best tool for the job, or at least in my opinion of it, which may be very different than yours, um, I generally like the oven as my default. So in other words, if I'm doing something, that uh, just any track in general that needs some enhancing, the oven is always going to be able to accomplish that, as they all will. But the oven does it in a way that's very articulate and punchy. It's just a great desert island does everything. The stove really excels even more in anything that needs a glossy sheen, something that 
enhances the stereo image in such a way that you feel like someone just made everything smooth and finished. In other words, it's like it sounds like a record. This one just enhances everything and makes it sound better. This one makes it sound better by making it sound like a glossy record. This one makes everything sound better by adding a density that is different than these two and is very full. So in other words, this one will reveal and articulate everything. This one will make a glossy sheen over everything. And this one will just make everything sound like you're inside of this. Like it'll make you sound like the music is now surrounding you. Uh, they all approach their treatment in different ways and all three of them are just outstanding tools. I would recommend any of them and I hope that this demo was of use to you. Sorry for my incessant rambling, but <laughs> I, I enjoy these tools. So enjoy and email us if you have any questions. We are happy to answer whatever you got.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>